What's going on everybody? Um, today I'm feeling a little goofy and uh, while I was preparing this video I realized I'm doing something kind of like the uh, modern crumbling AAA video game industry has been doing the last few years and that I'm going to take one of my old videos and I'm going to remaster it, re-release it, and revamp it for the modern age. Um, I did a video that was really basic on how to open the original Xbox now 12 years ago. Um, and at that point, I think it might be 480p quality. Um, so I wanted to redo this, get in a better quality. Also wanted to do a better job touching on all the tools and stuff. Really didn't do the best job explaining that in that old video too. Um, so I really wanted to, um, with this remaster, uh, I wanted to uh, take the opportunity to better explain some of the tools and make sure that's more clear and go through the entire disassembly process too. So we're going to actually pull all the parts out. Um, I'm also going to show uh, a few differences. Um, the console that we're working with here today is going to be a nice surprise because this is a sealed console. Um, never been opened before, so I don't know what version is in here. But we are going to talk about a few differences specifically with the 1.0 version because there's a couple little extra components in there. Let's dig right in by uh, starting with our tools, okay? So first things first is uh, the main tool that we're going to need is called a Torx screwdriver. That's T-O-R-X. Um, we're going to need three sizes specifically. Um, it's going to be a T20, a T15, in a T10 size Torx head. Now, if you're gonna do like I do, you know, these are really small little bits that go into an electric screwdriver, or sometimes you just have the little handle type too, but they still use these small bits. If, if we're, you're using that type, you will also need an extender arm. Okay, and all that is is it just lengthens it. And that's going to give us better clearance on uh, one area where it's hard to get in there and get the screws out. It's always good to have a few uh, little jewelry screwdrivers on you as well. Um, uh, specifically a couple of uh, flathead ones, you know, if you need to pry something and stuff like that. We do have a few pieces where it's just going to be a lot easier if you've got something like this. First things first, we're going to start with our T20. Get it set up here in my screwdriver. And we're going to flip the console over. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get these feet off of here. This is where one of those little flathead screwdrivers is going to come in handy. So, uh, yeah. Wow, these are just coming right off. I guess these were just barely on here. But, yeah, you can just dig under there. And, yeah, as you can see, they come right off. These were these might have been glued on there. They just popped right off. Um, so now we're going to take out the main six screws with our size T20 Torx head. Um, You've got our main four ones here, but then you've also got two that are behind these. Technically, they're warranty seals. You can either pull the sticker back if you like, but me personally, I just go ahead and put it right there. This one's about right here, so you can feel around until you, you can see where it kind of indents. And then you'll see your screwdriver pushes down, and then you just push down. That way you don't have to worry about peeling it back or anything. And honestly, once you peel those back, you can't, they look ugly, I think. So we do the same thing here. You just stick it down, kind of move it around until you find where the hole's at, and then it goes down. And it'll just pop right out. Now we'll do the other four, too. Okay, now we're going to take and pull all these out, set them aside. It's always good to have something, uh, to make sure you don't lose your screws. I like these little metal things right here. They're magnet and it'll make sure none of them get away from you. If not, just make sure you set them aside because you're going to have a lot of different screws after this is all, all done. Oh, here's one more. All right, so now we're going to flip it back over. At this point, we're just going to be able to essentially lift this right off the top. Okay, and so now we've got our console exposed. So what we got to do now is we've got our IDE cable here that's under the clip. We're going to just pull, slide that out and kind of get it out of our way. We're going to be switching over now to our size T10 Torx head. We're going to get this one screw that holds right here in the middle out. Now we're going to uh, take our IDE cable and we're going to go ahead just to get it out of our way. 
uh, we're going to remove it from our hard drive. So you want to be careful here. Do not just rip this out. And you want to get your fingers on the clip as best you can. Don't just pull it by the wires. And you're going to kind of pull the wires a tiny bit, but mostly you're going to pull on the connector itself. And then you can wiggle it out like that. Next, we're going to get our cable, the power cable. We're going to kind of get it out from here. This will be able to, this will let us be, move the hard drive out a little more. Like that. We're going to switch over to that size T15 now. You've got four screws, two on each side, so we're going to take all of those out. Okay, now we're going to be able to safely remove that, take our caddy and set it aside. Now that we can really get to this, so we're just going to kind of wiggle the power cable out. We're going to take our hard drive, set it aside as well. Now we've got our disk drive here. Um, this is where you're definitely going to need the extender, or like I said earlier, just a regular screwdriver that's like this will work. It just it has to be Torx. Because we've got two screws holding in the disk drive here. It's not too bad to get this one since we removed the hard drive. So we're going to get this one. Make sure I get a good view of it. It's like part of the disk drive right here. And then you've got the same thing on the other side here. Oh, I forgot to go back to T10 for these. So go back to T10. Don't even try to get them screws out. I'm going to flip this around because it's impossible. So we're going to just pull the disk drive up and out, carefully making sure we're not ripping at these cables to accidentally cause damage. Now we're going to remove and disconnect the yellow or sometimes it's brown and white power cable. Same thing with the IDE cable. Okay, now we've got our disk drive. Obviously, the disk drive can come out if you just kind of pull that out. If you need to do that, and we'll set up those two things. We're going to remove some of these extra cables now just to get the clunk out of the way so we got room to get to everything else. So we're going to move that DVD cable, the last IDE connector. Get those set aside. We've got um, our main Molex connector here, direct to the motherboard from the power supply. We're going to disconnect that. And what you got to do, and I can't really show it until I get it out, there's a little clip on all these right here. So you kind of push one end, and it releases the clip, and then you pull it out. Do not try to rip that out, because what will happen if you don't push that clip to release the clip, you'll pull the whole Molex out right here off the motherboard, and then, yeah, that's going to be a... a nightmare. Uh, so to get the power supply out, we've got two T10 screws right here. You'll see them right on the edge lining the motherboard. It doesn't really matter what version you got. They're all going to be just like that. Okay, so then we're going to kind of shimmy this out because we've got to get the, the power plug on the back is in the case. So we kind of have to shimmy it back and then up. We'll get that out of the way. So, okay, as you can see, um, we've got everything out now except the controller ports, the front panel, the fan, um, and like I said, this was sealed when we were working with this one, so I wasn't sure what I would have, but as you can see, I've got a Connexent video chip with a two-row pin connector here, so that means I have a 1.2 slash 1.3. Now, if you're working with a 1.0, you're going to, at this point, and you probably notice yours looks a little differently, so I'm going to touch on that just a little bit. When we, uh, when we remove this motherboard, you'll see there's an extra fan here on the GPU, and so that fan is connected directly to the motherboard. So unless you plan on messing with all that or you're cleaning it, you don't have to remove that fan and unplug it. When you remove the motherboard, it'll all come with it, okay? 
The other big difference with a 1.0 that you're going to notice is here in the front on our controller ports. Um, being that this is a 1.2 slash 3, we've got our two controller ports here, and everybody's is going to look exactly like this except a 1.0. On the 1.0, you have an extra PCB, and this is it right here. And it's actually kind of installed right here. And then instead of your controller ports plugging directly to the motherboard, your controller ports plug into this board and then this board plugs into the motherboard. Otherwise, all the other versions you can just simply unplug. You've got your two plugs here for your uh, controller ports, and you've got your front ring of light PCB. You've got that one to unplug as well. After unplugging those, let's go ahead. We're gonna get our controller ports, unscrew those, and get those out of the way. Those are also T uh, tins. Okay, then you kind of just pull those up from the back, and then you can kind of just pull them out. Sometimes those are a little stuck in there. Now that everything's unplugged, we can safely remove our faceplate. So we're going to get this bad boy off. Now, in order to do this, let's flip it upside down. So we've got the back like this, because so I'm trying to get in here to show you the best angle for this. This is one of those times where you definitely need a flathead, and really you can use any flathead. Um, even honestly a bigger one, a full size one would probably be better. But what you got to do is there's a little crevice here and this is on either side of the faceplate. You want to stick your screw driver in there and you want to pry out and you're going to hear it kind of pop. I, well, you didn't really hear it at that time of course. Uh, but you'll see it did kind of come out and come loose. So now what we can do is we can grab it by hand and we're going to get it a little bit further out. And then we're going to do the same on the opposite side here. Oh, and then got There we go. There was the pop noise it was supposed to make. Okay, so there, now, we've got both off the clip so we can just pull it forward. And each of those sounds, you're going to worry you're breaking something, but each of those sounds are actually these clips on the bottom, the clips on the side, and these were the controller ports. That's all that stuff like coming loose and popping out. So those sounds are fine. Don't worry that you're breaking anything. It just sounds like that. So for this faceplate, if you need to get the front power button ring light out, what you can do is on the bottom here, there's like a little clip. Take your flathead and you kind of push it down. And you'll see that this will pop out. So you pull it out from the bottom and you pull it out like that. Okay, now with just the motherboard left, we're going to... Um, well, and the fan, I guess. We're going to get the fan unplugged. You'll see the plug right here. Just pull that out. The fan is honestly kind of the biggest pain and the trickiest, especially if it's a new sealed console. It seems like after you've done it once or twice, they come in and out a lot easier, but that first time. So what it is is on the bottom of the fan on each side, you've got these little clips. So you have to take your flathead and then let's see if I can hopefully get a better angle here to show you. You're kind of getting that in underneath there and prying outwards. Okay, so what you got to do is do that motion, pry outwards while pulling upwards and wiggling a little bit on the fan. All you're trying to do is just get that clip to stay popped out. Okay, that's, that's really all you're trying to do. That first clip you want to get it to where it's out and not holding it. That way you can get here on the second side, do the same thing, and you'll see and feel that now the fan comes up. A problem you're going to have is like it, it's going to want to pop back into the clip each time. So if it pops back in the clip, you've just got to like hold it, pry it, get it above the clip, do it on the second side again until you can get them both popped up without them going back down. Now that it's loose, we, we're going to lift it up as high as it can go, and then you kind of pull it out from the top to get these top clips out, and then we can take and pry open these clamps again to get it around that last section on the fan. It's kind of weird and complicated, but honestly, once you do it once, you realize it's not too bad. Those are the, That's a good view of the clips for you, too, so you can see how they're kind of in there without the fan. 
Now we just got the motherboard, and that's pretty self-explanatory. We're just going to take, you've got a bunch of screws. Depending on your version, these will be placed a little bit differently. So just be careful, make sure you get each and every one. Okay, so now we can just start pulling upwards. Your one issue is you've got this little post right here. You've got to kind of lift up over it. And then you've got to kind of wiggle the AV port out and slide it out like that. Then we're going to take my screws and put them here with my other ones. And now our motherboard's out. And so that's pretty much the full disassembly. But I did want to add, if you want to remove this one little thing, uh, if you've got the version, I think all but one version has this, um, you've got to remove this first. There's a little bit of adhesive that kind of also makes it go up underneath some of these. So in order to get this out, you have to pull that. Then you should be able to just easily slide that off and you're left with just the case. And that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'm not going to cover reassembly much. Unlike the Xbox 360 and Xbox One and modern consoles that have the weird face plates and the weird ribbons, there's nothing really like that on here. So all you're going to be doing if, you, if you're reassembling is just literally placing things right back in their place, screwing them back in, um, and it's not really tricky. And that's it, guys. I hope that this was a better tutorial than my one from 12 years ago. And uh, until next time.